Nobody likes to be separated. And we have here our beautiful microphone. And in a different file, we have our also beautiful microphone stand. And what I'm going to show you now is how we can combine these two pieces or models together inside a new file. And we would like to prepare or adjust the geometry so we can pose and animate everything nice and fast. Both of the files, the microphone and this microphone stand are what I consider modeling files. Because if I click here onto this part, you see this is just the raw basic geometry. And then I have the feature stack. The Boolean command can, if I move this around, slow things down a little bit. And you see it's a little bit choppy. I could animate it if I want to, but it is better actually if I can bake or apply the modifiers so the geometry can be moved faster. Because essentially the design part is done. Now it's the task of making uh, a textured model and animating and rendering it. So a little bit of housekeeping. Now here we have our two files. This, for example, I could call mic stand modeling. So I know what this is. And also I call this one modeling. This way I can really call things out. And then I will make a new file of my microphone stand. And uh, let's say I, I call this one mic plus stand rendering. So I know actually what's inside this file. Save, save as, uh, yeah, cool. Okay, so let's clean up some stuff. First, this background image, that can go. I have all these modifiers, now I wanna get rid of them. So I click apply and apply and apply. And this apply does not just remove the geometry, uh, sorry, the modifier. It actually removes the, the modifier and creates the geometry. So it's a pretty, pretty quick, easy task. Doesn't take too long. You remember this was a little bit choppy when I moved this around and now it's super fast. Cool. Okay. So this, um, task pretty much will make the file or the geometry much easier to move around much easier to animate because also here now I just only have one object I need to mentally take care of I do not have to be bothered by all the boolean objects I used to generate that file so I can actually delete those and also that collection all this stuff is gone Cool, very nice. So the geometry is baked. I have really nice, beautiful, clean pieces. That's awesome. Now, if I would like to animate it, for example, this should rotate. This maybe should go up and down. This maybe actually can spin and go up and down too. It's not a question of hierarchy. When I want to animate, for example, the center rod to go up and down. Well, who's going to the parent? Who's going to be the child? And here I would say this and this, these two oranges are the children and the rod is the parent. So I click those first and then the, um, the pipe object and parent. So when I now move the parent up and down, you see everything moves with it. By the way, for those who are interested in, we can even lock actually the movement. Now this only can go up and down, basically where this is positioned. I can actually change the value, but now when I'm dragging it, this really means only for dragging. Okay. But it's also so easy when we just click on the, the arrow key. Cool. Okay. Now, um, you and you 
Yeah, you we could parent if we want to, and then maybe oh hold on, let's undo all this. Yeah, who's now the parent? The big base or the ring? Now, um, I have actually the base. It's a millimeter off the ground where the object center point is. So it's a question of how we would like to do this. I I will simply select the lower part, so the ring, because that's really then the zero point. You see, when I select this, the object is at zero and I model this one with a millimeter off. This way, then I really know everything when I move the ring onto zero will be flush. Okay, that was a lot of words. Trust me, what I say is true. So parent everything to that ring. So you see now when I move this around, all this follows, but actually not the other stuff. Now, these two are children of this pipe. So this pipe, I will make also a child to this ring. So it's a very simple chaining there very nice and in here so if i click this one telescope arm you see that it has the other elements in it you will see how the parts will be will be stacked um so they're not gone they are just kind of like think about compound shapes or forms in illustrator or groups okay very good so the um, Microphone stand is kind of finished. And now we can try and take a look at how do we bring actually the microphone in. So here I have the file now open and we will do literally exactly the same steps here. So I will quickly apply everything there. And there and there. Also here, all the screw and the bevel and the cuts for the holes. And this is all, this is all permanent now. So before I do this, I really want to make sure um, that my modeling phase is actually really finished. Then I can, yeah, the mesh. So the, um, <laughs> The mesh actually here, I will probably not change. I will see if I can keep this actually as an interactive element because it's not really that complicated. The Boolean commands is really what uh, generates a lot of issues. Okay, very good. So all this is done. Then let's do a little bit of cleanup. Okay, here. I will select all these parts and delete them. Oh, okay. You see there, I, I deleted actually this um, Boolean command in my case. So when I select this one and move this around and there you see already, Ooh, this is stop motion. Huh? So that can't, I mean, you can animate it. It's not really that useful to be animated. So for this top mesh, I will apply it simply cause then this will be faster. And there we are. Then this can go. What's all this? And yeah, these parts can go Q and U. That's the mesh layout. Okay. So all the stuff. Bye bye. Gone, gone, and gone. Very nice. Okay, then uh, the mic shell has somewhere the booleans, so all this probably can go too. Yep, these cuts, very good. Yeah, there we are. Very nice. Then, yeah, how do we now do actually the, the collections? See here, I use the collections to break everything apart. 
we have, however, um, or when we start doing everything in, not doing, when we start parenting everything, it will be different anyway, because the way how it's stacked. So what I will, what I can do now is I will press A, uh, AA to select everything, press M for the move to this scene collection. You see, I moved it all out of these collections out. So I think this can go, this can go, and then all these collections can go. Okay, very good. So for the stand, what is now the easiest thing? So you and you to you, we parent, control P. Very good. So you know, this is basically um, one object in the lister there are the other objects are inside so let's call this one here bracket socket or base so we know what this object is then we can select um yeah how do we do this this is the base so the question now is okay what do i actually parent to what here Ideally, the easiest thing is this is the biggest part to select and rotate. So what I will do is I will in wireframe mode simply select everything, make sure that then this is the last selected object, Control P. There you see it's com um, condensed down to one part and mic, cool. And the mic is however, um, a parent, sorry, a child to this one. So U, Shift U, Control P, there. So when this moves around, there. When I select this one, yeah, how do I rotate this now? So you see there's actually the rotate button. Go to the side view and rotate. Yeah, but that doesn't really rotate around the correct axis. Here we have these knobs with which we can rotate and we're going to fix some of the positioning for, of those object um, center points or origins. I will press Alt H, uh, no, Shift H, Shift H to hide everything else besides this what is selected. Then I go into edit mode, face select, Alt click this and Alt click this. So I have these two faces selected. Shift S cursor to select it. Very good. You see it's right there. Tab to go out of edit mode, right click and origin to 3D cursor. So now I moved that center point right to there. Zero. And even this, you know, we can set to zero. So because this object was rotated when we did that circular array. Cool. Okay. So, um, yeah. So that is good. Now I can select this piece, right click and say origin to 3D cursor. And now check out what happens when I do this. It rotates. So this this object just rotates. And because all the other objects are children of this, they follow that rotation. You see, this has now a minus 60 degree rotation. If I click this, it has a zero because it's not really rotated. It just forcefully is forced to follow the forceful indoctrination of the parent, evil parents here, zero, very good. Cool. Okay. Even screws, everything follows it. You see, super easy. Then we will save this as, uh, for example, mic um, rendering. So we make a new copy. Okay. Thank you. Let's go back to our mic stand rendering. So that file because now we want to copy the other pieces in. And it's very easy. We can go to File, Append. Then we go to where we have this modified microphone file. Here it is, Cl double click. Then you get, you look into the object. 
so the file, sorry, not object, the file. And there you see all the elements which are inside. We go to object, double click, and there you see everything. So now we can press A and append, and there it is. So now I select this and move this around, there's the mic. Pretty cool. And you see also here, the structure is exactly the same. That makes it super easy. Now I can move this one up and bring this kind of down to here. Very good. So yeah, how, um, when I move this one up, how do I make the microphone move? Well, it's very easy. When this is the parent that moves, then this parent needs not to be the child of this rod. And that's it. Control P or parent there. Awesome. So when now this one moves up, you see the rest follows it. Here, this maybe we would like to rotate along the Z axis, 45 degrees. Uh, how much should we rotate? Is it this one? Yeah, now this is the local orientation. How beautiful is that? Awesome. Okay. Uh, I noticed one piece here got missing. Oh no, it is there. Good. It's inside. Pretty nice. Yeah. So now, as you see, we actually created a render file where we can bring in the, the different parts, the models, post them as we want. We can move them around very fast. We are not really limited to making sure I move all the modifiers with it because the modifiers are on the fly working on the geometry. This mesh is very fast, lightweight, easy to move around to texture and to render. And that's it.